So we have a panel discussion again up here. This time we will have more people uh, present uh, on the stage. So please join me here. Panila Baymak, you are a master researcher focused on sustainability, uh, the impacts of ICT, and you're from Ericsson. And we also have Nick Nuttall from Earth Day. There you are, Nick. Okay. Please join us. And we have, of course, Ingmar Rensor from, um, we don't have time, the founder. Please move along. We can join, join me here on this table, Pernilla. And uh, we have Christina Kolmak, who is also a climate reality leader. Just like Ingmar, you see the re green rings. That means that they're climate reality leaders. And we also have Tuve. Uh, Tuve is from uh, Global Utmoni, Tuve Alström. And you also have a green ring yes. somewhere on your jacket here. <laughs> Wonderful to have all of you here. So I'd like to start off with an open question. What does Together We Are The Solution mean to you? Anyone? Nick, you're the okay, quickest. I, I, I think you have to listen to all these presentations. I mean, I think one thing's absolutely clear, that um, we've got a lot of action happening in the world. You know, that we're not starting from ground zero, but there is a fragility in the political process, in the economic process, and in the scientific process, and that fragility is ourselves. And unless we all stand together now, unless the citizens of the world come together and really demand and give the governments the license to operate in a sustainable future, mm -hmm put pressure on the companies and consumer products to actually produce what is needed, not what sells. Uh, I don't think we're going to get anywhere, but I think I'm cautiously optimistic when I see these young people, and I see the parents also now standing up, that maybe we do have the beginnings of a citizens' movement, again, like we did in 1970 on Earth Day, because uh, without that, it's not going to work, and that's what being together is in terms of the solutions. Thank you. Yeah. To Vossum, you uh, you're, you're work with Global Utmoning, Global yes. Challenge is the translation into English, and you have your office here, and you work very closely with, with We Don't Have Time. What is your take on this, on this message, Together We Are The Solution? I mean, for me, to, to create platforms, that is most what we do, create platforms where politicians, scientists, uh, companies, and civil society can meet together, mm -hmm. and to form new solutions uh, for sustainable development. So I think everybody has to really come together to create the solution. So, I mean, the politicians must take brave and sometimes very uncomfortable decisions, and companies as well, to be more circular and to, to come to a fossil-free world. But also me, myself, and me, my, all the women and, and men on the streets, we have to really think about what we are doing to really be the change we need today. So, I mean, it's so easy to point the fingers, like I hear it so often, like, oh, the politicians should do their job. No, we all should do our job. So that is, yeah, what we're doing here. Together, we are the solution. Thank you, Tuve. Christina Kolmak, you as an Ingmar and, and Tuve, the, your global climate reality leaders, and you took part in Al Gore's education uh, training program to become this and to work with climate topics. Uh, this is important work that you're doing. What would you say is the connection between what you've been taught in this training and what's happening here today with the We Don't Have Time? Well, I would say that at the training, you get to meet all these people with mm -hmm. insights like we have today here because you need the insight to be able to act. And what uh, Al Gore and Climate Reality do is do, they're doing is to train us all over the world, and then you're sent back to train people locally. Mm. So that's what I do, and all of us do. We pledge to do that, and I do it in the business community. And this is when I see together, because it's not just any group, it's a management team or a strategy department, and then we, we raise the level of awareness together and they get a shock about what the climate crisis is about. Mm. And then we go into action. So what do you need to do? So that's, that's one way of bringing insight into action uh, that climate reality is actually doing. Thank you, Christina. Um, Penila Weimark, uh, you work with Johan Falk, who just presented before the Exponential uh, Climate Roadmap. Um, how would you say that companies can collaborate better with academia and also civil society? Because you're a good example at Ericsson of actually doing this. Yeah, I, I think it's very, very important for companies to stand on a solid ground of facts. And the, this is the reason why we have been working. Uh, we have a, our own research department where we are doing uh, collaborations with universities and we publish peer-reviewed pa papers and so on. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, by getting the facts, that enables you to, to, to uh, take good decisions, and it also uh, gives you credibility. 
And I think uh, talking about the climate uh, shadow, uh, the, the climate crisis, which is uh, perhaps the most uh, the hugest uh, challenge that uh, humanity has met, uh, we need really to combine our different competences, and there we need to bring our competences and knowledge as companies together with the knowledge from academia and and uh, accelerate the change. Thank you, Panila. Um, Ingma, Tessa Kahn spoke earlier uh, today about the importance of of ur the essence of urgency, and it's even more important to act together now than ever before. And she referred to, to previous examples in history that we actually did and succeeded. Um, when you founded this organization, uh, what were your hopes that this could really achieve? And now you're standing here a year later. Um, what are your feelings? Uh, my hope when I founded this organization was uh, the first goal is that we need to see the problem as severe as it actually mm. is. And uh, we, here we have seen some really great progress the two year, uh, latest year. Mm. Uh, if you were talking about the climate crisis, as many people, many leaders today are, you will have been seen as totally alarmist and crazy just two years ago. It's only two years. Mm -hmm. And the conversation about the climate crisis, I mean, I don't think normal people used the term climate crisis two years ago. So it's happening a lot. And people are also know that we don't have time. We need to act. And we are seeing a lot of new organizations. R is just one example. It's a lot of other organizations out there. Friday for Future, Extinction Rebellion etc etc uh, and the old ones is also starting to awakening and and it's really open for cooperating mm. and i'm s absolutely certain that we will succeed if we keep on doing this together on our own way but cooperating mm. so that's what our goal is is to actually help everyone to be part of the solution mm -hmm. and connect everyone that wants to contribute. Thank you, Imbar. I have one. <laughs> I have one final question to anyone can answer. Um, how do we get more big actors like the UN and the EU to grasp this and to move on? Is it by Vote Earth? That's one way, of course. Any other uh, solutions that we need to sort of... I, th I think there's a real elephant in the room here. I think it's been here all day, and Jeffrey Sachs uh, touched on it, which is we are living in a world right, right now that's never been richer. You know, I, I mean, the world has never had more money. Uh, interest rates are so low that some people are actually paying the banks to actually look after money. Yet, w is this money investing in the new economy? Why is it not investing in the new economy? Why is it sitting either on the sidelines or continuing, as Jeffrey points out, like JP Morgan, to invest in the fossil fuel industry? Why is it doing that? We still have a screwed economic structure right here on this planet, which is valuing degradation and destruction and short-termism over the long-term future of the world that needs to happen. And I think that when you look at your, uh, your, your campaign, if I can put it that way, uh, with the little symbols and things like that and the hearts, it can't just be corporates. It has to be the investors as well. Yes. Because this thing is not going to be turned around unless that money starts flowing into the right kind of economy. That's absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. would you like that? <laughs> Yeah, I think on top of that, I think it's very important to build a co coalition of the willing to, to join forces with the front runners because there are front runners among companies, among cities, among individuals, among, among uh, uh, politicians. So I, I think we need to get stronger together. Well, thank you very much for, for taking, taking part in this panel. It's short and sweet, but we need to <laughs> get this uh, show uh, finished. We have a deadline, actually. Uh, so thank you, Tove. Thank you, Nick. Thank, thank you, you, Christina. And you will stay here, Ingmar, with me for a bit. And uh, thank you very much, Panela, for joining us. Give them a warm hand. <laughs> <laughs>